Most of us know what a bandsaw is, and the majority of us can tell us the difference between the two common types of bandsaws found in the industry. In case you don't know, they are the horizontal type bandsaw, which cuts in a chopping motion, and the vertical bandsaw, which is manually fed in and can cut corner, uh, corners, contours, and different shapes out of it. Now, one thing that those two have in common, they both need a properly broken in blade. Now, there's a couple of things that people don't usually know about the properly broken in blades. One is that the teeth do not actually come to a point. They are not sharp in the ways that everybody thinks that they are. Right? They actually have a radius edge around them. The other one, the procedure needed to break in a blade. That's what we're going to go over in just a minute. But what do bandsaw owners typically want to know or see out of their machines? Okay? One of those being they want to see a long-lasting blade. Because replacing blades is actually rather expensive. Not only the cost of the blade, but the time it takes to set your machine back up and break it in again. That's costly. It takes a lot of downtime. And the other thing they want to see is a rapid cut. The less time you have actually cutting your material is the more time you can spend producing your material. In fact, if you get a properly broken in blade, you can take it straight off the saw and throw it in the box and ship it out if that was all that was needed. The third thing, a clean cut. Less time cleaning up all the slag and junk after the cut or post cut is more time producing or shipping it right away. So how do you get a perfectly clean cut as fast as possible with the longest blade life? You take the time to break it in after you replace the blade. How do you break it in? Check this out. Typical online search will net thousands of results on proper break-in procedures. Now, the first place that you should definitely check is with the bandsaw blade manufacturer. Some of them have their own very specific break-in instructions which you should follow to ensure that you get a long blade life. Now, if you can't identify the bandsaw blade manufacturer or can't find their procedures, you can follow the general rule which most of them agree upon is the proper break-in procedure. That rule, half of the blade speed at half of the feed rate for the first 80 to 100 inches of the blade life. This will ensure that you get a long lasting blade in very clean cuts. Now what does all of that look like and how do you do it? I'll show you. Now you should check with your bandsaw manufacturer to find out how to change the speeds, but a couple of different designs here which I'll show you, this one being my vertical bandsaw, has a grooved pulley, has two different sizes on it, on the drive pulley and the driven pulley, has two different grooves in it as well. This creates two separate speeds. My horizontal bandsaw is an industrial style and has two different settings on it, they are bunny and turtle. That usually means high speed and low speed. So to start off, we're going to switch it over on to low speed and set our piece up. So let's set up a little quick work piece. I'm just going to use a little piece of scrap here. So remember, our blade speed is at half speed right now. And what I'm going to do is cut this at about half of the typical rate at which I cut at. Now this is painfully slow, but this is how it works. Quick clean up, and there is a very nice clean cut. Now that is at half the rate, our feed rate, and half the speed, which is our break in procedure rate. So you do that for basically the first 80 to 100 inches of it. So that means cutting this piece quite often. <laughs> so by comparison, let's just toss in, uh, make an adjustment real quick. We'll set it up to go full speed on it. So, quick comparison this is what I typically use at production rate. Again, nice clean cut, minimal cleanup involved afterwards. That blade is going to last quite some time because it's been properly broken in. So now you can see the difference between this side and this side here. They're pretty much exactly the same. So this blade is properly broken in. Now this rule is actually based on your production speed. Now your production speed might be a little bit different than mine. So the first cut that I made was at half of my production speed at the half of my production rate. 
So in the second one was at full production speed and full production rate that I usually cut out with a properly broken in blade. Yours might be a little bit different than mine, and each saw that you have might vary slightly too. So just remember where you were at, you need to do about half of that for proper breaking procedure. So in this case, if you have, uh, let's just say, um, for the first 80 to 100 inches, if your piece was one inch tall, set up and the, shot, or the uh, saw was coming down like this, you'd have to do this one inch piece 80 to 100 times before it was properly broken in. If it was four inches tall, set up like this, cutting down the exact same way, you would have to do it 20 to 25 times in order to get that blade properly broken in. So that's just kind of a, a general rule for you to follow. Now I'm going to uh, post up here a couple of pictures now of uh, the bandsaw blades. One on top is properly broken in. You notice that the teeth on it have a nice rounded kind of edge to them. And the one down below it is not broken in and it has a perfectly sharp or pointy uh, teeth on it. So there's a difference between the two of them. When you get to that point of the blade on top where it looks like that, you're pretty much broken in and you're good to go. It doesn't happen right away. So that gives you a good visual comparison. Now at the same time, this video is kind of short and sweet, so let's do some, uh, I don't know, some satisfaction cuts of uh, watching the saw gnaw its way through some really cool material to uh, some really nice, uh, soft, kind of uh, classical cozy music, something like that. Well, I hope that worked for you. And if you need to get in touch with me, you can send me a message on the fabricationseries.com website, facebook.com slash the fabricator series. Follow along on Instagram at the.fabricator. Now make sure you check the description here below and you'll get all that contact details and whatnot. I want to thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.